Hello everyone, I'm Paul and today I'm going to show you something really cool. This is part one of a series on how to do tie-dye with controlled edges. So what is that exactly? Essentially you're taking a white cotton t-shirt, 100% cotton, make your own design and you're going to paint on with tie-dye and have nice sharp edges for whatever pattern you have, kind of like I did for this shirt. But first let me tell you this, some of the supplies and some of the costs to make sure you're okay with doing a project like this. It's pretty cheap, but let me show you. So first you have your little uh, two ounce containers of your dye, essentially it's a powder. I get mine from Dharma Supplies, these, these Dharma fiber reactive dyes. You can get it on Amazon, Dick Blick, lots of other places. So let's assume $4 a container. Let's say you get four, that's $16. Uh, freezer paper, so this is what you're gonna use to draw your design on it, cut it out, iron it on a shirt, paint inside, $4. Uh, you're also gonna need soda ash, which I didn't bring up, but there's what it looks like. Really cheap, $2 for a two pound bag. That's what helps the, the fiber active dyes bind to the shirt better. Uh, you're also gonna need something called sodium alginate. This is made from seaweed, and essentially what it does is it thickens up the uh, dye so you can use it like a paint. Two main kinds, low viscosity, that's for silk, high viscosity, that's what you want, that's for cotton. And uh, also you'll need urea crystals. The job of the urea is to slow down the drying process. So one pound bag, $3, pretty cheap. The other, the other thing you'll need is textile detergent. I use this brand here. Again, that's from Dharma, but there's many places you can get it. I use this brand because it's different from the normal Synthropol, which is not so good for the environment. So I use this more eco-friendly uh, detergent as an afterwash and it works pretty good. Uh, the job of the afterwash detergent is to, when you're done with your project, you put in the wash, the excess dye bleeds out. You don't want it going into the areas of the shirt where you don't want dye. So the job of that is to prevent that. So total, about 40 bucks. So fairly affordable uh, to do this. And the good thing is it's not just one shirt. This can get you many shirts and probably last you a couple years with that $40 investment. It took me a while to figure out this whole process. There was many epic failures, but after a couple years, I finally have it down pretty good. Okay, let's go to the next step. Okay, so the first step is to put your design on the freezer paper. That would be kind of the paper side, not the waxy side. And then you're gonna cut that out. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do this. You can use just simple, exacto knife rulers and uh, all kinds of different stuff to draw it on there and simply cut it out uh, for the purposes of this shirt i did it on a computer program then put it in my uh, cricut program and cut that out with my cricut machine but i've done tons of shirts with just a pencil and an exacto knife and that works really good let me show you something simple assuming you want to do like just put a big tie-dye heart on a shirt let me show you how you would do that okay so let's assume you want to just do a big heart so really you just make your heart shape then you're going to take your exacto knife. I'm just doing this kind of approximately, kind of a rough. So, and I'm not even really going on lines, but just to show you how to do this. Okay, so there's my design. Now I've got a nice heart shape there. So then I would put that on the shirt. Put that on the white shirt. You're gonna iron on and, and paint inside this area there. Okay, so let's go over how to make the thickening paste. And there's different amounts of these different things you put together, and I will put a little description on a page. You can take a snapshot on like three different amounts depending on how much you want. First, for this one, I'm gonna take one third cup of hot water, put it into my little glass ball, and for one third a cup of water, you wanna put one tablespoon of the urea crystals in here. Okay, so now that you got it in there with the hot water, you want to stir that until you can't see little crystals anymore. So this just takes about a minute or maybe two, so I'll catch up to you in about two minutes. Okay, so here we are about the two minute mark, and if you can see in there, those crystals are pretty much all gone. Now, the next thing we want to do is add our sodium alginate in here, and that's the stuff that's going to make it thick enough so it makes it nice like a paint, almost like an oil paint, if you've ever used oil paint. So for this amount, I like to use about a half a teaspoon. And as you put it in there, let's see if you can see this, I'll try to do it left-handed or backwards. You just stir, stir, stir until all that stuff, sodium alginate, is in the liquid or in the solution. Now I'm going to stir this. This takes a while longer, so I usually stir this for about five minutes until it starts to Thicken up a little bit more and you can't really see all these little uh, pieces of the sodium alginate. This is then gonna sit for two hours 
Uh, and it lasts anywhere from two hours to, I've used it up to a week later, and it works pretty good. So this is gonna get much thicker than two hours, and I'll probably come back to the two hour mark and show you where we're at. But again, if you leave it for a couple more days after that, it gets super thick. I usually like it pretty thick for uh, painting with a tie dye. Okay, so I'll catch up to you in about two hours when this sits there and gets nice and thick. Zambo, two hours later. Okay, so let's look at our paste. Looking pretty good. That's about how thick I like it. So if you pour it right over, it doesn't even come out. So it's just moving real thick. Okay, so when you add the dye, it's gonna make a kind of like a nice paint. Let me clean this off. Okay, so now how to prepare the dyes. Before you start using your little tins, you wanna put a little bit of the soda ash in each one and just a little bit for each one. I'll do a couple. I'm gonna use eight different colors, but see how I'm just putting a little bit in each one. Normally you would soak for normal tie dyeing, you soak your shirt in it, but this process is a little bit different. So it's just kind of a little smidgen full, if smidgen is a real word. Okay, so now I'm gonna take some of my paste Put it down in there. This is the thickener. And you don't really need a lot, it goes a long way. And I'm gonna do eight. So actually I'll just do one and I'll do the eight colors after I show you one. Okay, so I'm gonna get this real dry. Now I'm gonna take, uh, let's see, this is deep orange. So let's take some deep orange and how much you put in there dictates how uh, intense of a color it's gonna be. So I'm gonna take maybe about that much Drop it in there, maybe just a drop more so it comes out real nice and powerful. So see, not all that much. Then I'm gonna stir it up, put the lid back on that. So I'm gonna kind of stir, stir, stir. And that's gonna be real thick and you gotta really make sure it all dissolves in there. All the different parts come together. The, the uh, thickener, the dye, and that soda ash. And if you want just a little bit thinner, which sometimes is good, I'll take just a little little water squirt in there and just make it a little thinner now that I've got that other dye in there which also thickens it up a little bit okay now I'm just going to stir for a while you really want to make sure that soda ash is dissolved with a dye don't want any clumps and then it's going to make a great basically paint and this is tie dye so this stuff stays on the shirts for a long time I've had some for years and it looks just like the day I made it uh, that's what you get when you use the soda ash and the real fiber reactive dyes. It just stays in there for a long time. Okay, so a couple little more chunks in there, but I, I would just stir a little bit longer until those chunks are basically out. But you can see we kind of got a nice painting paste for painting on the shirts. Okay, so I'm going to go do eight more different colors, and I'll meet up with you then. Okay, now to iron on the uh, design. And remember, you want the shiny side, the waxy side down. This was a pre-shrunk shirt I haven't washed yet, so it's got a nice line right in the middle to kind of help me let me know where the middle of the shirt is. Not that it really matters, but it depends on your design. And let's say I want to put it right about here and maybe there. Okay, so I'm going to take my iron, which I have on pretty high setting. I'm just going to iron it right on. I'm just going to turn down the steam. We don't really need a lot of steam. We just want it super hot. I'm going to press down so that freezer paper really is stuck to that shirt. And I do have a, a towel, an old towel, between the two layers of the shirt. So when I paint on here, I don't want it going onto the back of the shirt. So I'm just going to put this on here. Do part two, because I want kind of a, a circle around the whole thing. And maybe right, right there. Okay, so then I'm gonna iron this one on too. And there we go, pretty centered. First, just kind of tap it down. Okay, then I'm gonna iron this one on. So I'll catch up to you in a minute. I'll probably take the painting outside because it's getting a little bit darker and I wanna catch some of that sunlight so I can see the actual uh, dye paint when I paint. So I'll catch up to you in a minute outside. Okay, time to paint. Now I have all my tie dyes ready to paint. So here we go. Oh, I can hear a woodpecker above me, how cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to take our paints and you wanna paint real lightly. You don't want a lot of goop stuff on top. So you just kinda wanna take it real small. Actually, I think I'll use a smaller brush in that area there. So you don't want a lot on the edges of the freezer paper. 
So I think I'll do a star, kind of a glacier blue. And I'll show you how I do like one other little bit and I'll catch up to you after a while. So there's the star. You try not to get make it too thick. Otherwise, when you're trying to get the excess dye off later, it'll splatter around to get on the shirt. So not too thick. Okay, so there's the star and I'll catch up in a little bit. I'll do a little more and show you where I'm at. Okay, so I've decided to, to do a kind of a stripe pattern on the tree. Okay, here we are the next day. So I kept it in the house uh, during the night to dry, the nice, fairly warm house. I still have the freezer paper on. Now I'm gonna take my iron, which is set to uh, just about the highest setting cotton, and I'm gonna steam it for a while. And just for kind of short periods of time, where you can use heat and moisture to lock in those colors. So we're just gonna take it nice and slow. And I'm gonna do this for probably 10 minutes because I want a lot of moisture in there. And I'm not gonna drag it across the surface because that'll take one color into the next area. I just set it on steam, hold it for a second, and then move on to the next spot. So I'm gonna do this, uh, yeah, maybe five, 10 minutes. And of course you want to do this in a well-ventilated area outside like I'm doing now. Okay, so now I'm going to take that freezer paper off. Looking good. Got some nice sharp edges there. Got one more section. Okay, so looking pretty awesome so far. Okay. There. Okay, so looking pretty good. Now we're gonna go to one more step to get some of that excess dye out of there and then put it in the wash. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a bucket, put my shirt over it, and spray some of that excess dye out of there before I put it in the washing machine with a different detergent. So I'll turn on the hose. And just kind of slow it first. There goes a lot of the dye. I'm just going to spray that out of there. So get rid of some of that, all this the dye down in there, a little bit more, and it should be ready to go in. There's some areas where you can see the color bleeding through, so I just kind of push that right on through the shirt. And now I'm going to put in my shirt where the hot water is going to hit it. Throw in an old towel. I'm going to put in a little bit of that uh, professional textile detergent. It takes just a quarter cup. Turn on the hot cycle and second rinse. I'm going to put just a little, just a regular washing machine soap in here, also. Not too much. Okay, so there you go. That's how to make a tie dye controlled edge shirt. Now, this is part one of the series because there's some variations you can do, and I'll show you again in part two. I hope you'll join me.